Hello and welcome back to the History of Comics. Today I am not going to do a History of Comics. I am instead uh, responding to the uh, graphic novel tag uh, created by uh, Mango Hoarder. Uh, but I, I was tagged by Samuel Trejo and uh, he posted a, a list of questions there. They're not, they're, they're not mandatory according to Mango Hoarder, so I'm not going to follow the order completely. But uh, there's uh, we have to talk about a series of graphic novels that um, meant different things for us. So the the first one, the, the first graphic novel I have read, uh, I've already shown this, um, although, although not the interiors. Uh, this is the Squadron Supreme um, trade paperback collection, which collects the the original Mark Grunewald miniseries. Uh, this is the 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 copy with um, Mark Grunewald's ashes in them, and uh, nice cover by. Alex Ross. I've had this for uh, almost 20 years. Um, I haven't read it. I mean, I haven't read it in a while. The the next one is a graphic novel that that I loved. Uh, it's definitely definitely the Earth X and the Earth X series, although. Universe Sex is still good, Paradise Sex is not the same level of quality, but the first one is still the best. Uh, this started from an idea by Alex Ross that was published in uh, in Wizard. It doesn't feature Alex Ross art in the interior, it's John Paul Leon, one of the most underrated artists ever. And it's a... it's the equivalent to... to Kingdom Come by, by Marvel, although a little bit more dystopic. It's a future. There's a lot of ideas here that that were used in um, the regular Marvel universe, including the the Inhumans uh, releasing the the Terrigen mists into the atmosphere, and that's why every, now in the future every every person on Earth has superpowers. If you're a fan of the Marvel universe uh, and and all of the the connections that were built up throughout the years, and you're going to love Earth X. Uh, next, uh, a graphic novel that disappointed me. I don't have it anymore. Uh, <laughs> a funny story. It was Jimmy Corrigan, and uh, I bought it, and I could not get past page four. It j was just not something that I wanted to read. Uh, I was getting bored, and I wanted to kill the characters. Uh, so I traded it, and I traded it for a... <laughs> book about uh, Formula One cars. This is not comics, <laughs> but uh, I treated it with a person that, uh, like me, likes comics and cars. So I treated it for this. doesn't have anything to do with uh, comics. I just thought it was a uh, funny story. Uh, something that needs a... that I should reread. Um, I'm going to go with two different comics. Th these are def these are things that I need to pick up. Now, pick up from the shelves again. Uh, number one, of course, the the Invisibles. I have the entire series as a as a series of graphic novels. This is the comic that launched uh, Grant Morrison's all, more alternative career in the United States after having uh, started at Animal Man and Doom Patrol. But this is the the thing that is the first thing that was published that was big and completely his. Uh, by then, I think he had already done uh, as Sebastian O, but that was a pretty obscure thing. The other, of course, the other, of course, is one of the best comic books that Frank Miller ever worked on, with with art by Dave Gibbons, uh, The Life and Times of Martha Washington. This is the, the complete collection. It's a, an interesting science science fiction tale, which is not something that you're used to from, uh, from Frank Miller. And... This is a story of a person who is basically the spirit of the times in the United States, even though it's all in the all in the future. Uh, it's very very touching, uh, very touching finale. This is, is definitely for the the more sentimentally minded people, which is, which is funny because science fiction is is usually uh, the setting is more important than the characters, but that's not the case here. Okay, a graphic novel that I would recommend f to anyone. Uh, I suppose the the Parker series of novels is a 
is a good choice. These are, are not superheroes and the they're not difficult to read. The, the, the art is pretty good. This was done by only the only the four Parker the first four Parker novels were adapted uh, because of unfortunately Darwin Cook's very early uh, demise. He's, he, this is a, an art style that is going to be missed a lot, and uh, I, I thought he still had at least twenty years of, of career, let let alone a life where he could have produced many more high quality comics. So there are four Parker Parker novel adaptations. This is the first one, The Hunter. And I suggest that you pick them up. A comic with art I liked. Um unlike uh, most people, I usually buy I usually buy gra graphic novels because of the story, not the art. But I'm going to go with uh, Blaze of Glory. Uh, this was an attempt by Marvel, I would say not at resurrecting it's uh, Western characters, more like resurrecting the interest in in, in Western characters, um, because a lot of their characters die here, including one of my favorites, the the Tugan Kid. Great art by Leonardo Manco. This is a this is not the the cookie cutter the Western heroes that we're used to seeing from uh, from Marvel. In fact, this is. <laughs> This is a representation of Kid Colt, uh, Tugan Kid, and the Outlaw Kid, uh, quite different from their original portrayals. And you know, uh, I think Europeans have a taste, have a, a better taste for uh, westerns nowadays than Americans. Uh, a graphic novel that made me laugh. I don't have it anymore, but um. E I'm going to recommend something French. Uh, if you can pick up an Asterix book that will make you laugh, pick up uh, Asterix and the Roman Agent. If you don't laugh at that, you have no sense of humor whatsoever. Uh, and please stop reading comics. <laughs> okay, just kidding. But no, that, that is a one very funny comic. And it's probably the funniest of the Asterix novels. Something that took me out of my comfort zone. Uh, this is a graphic novel by my friend David Suarez. This is a Portuguese uh, comic um, published by Kingpin a few years ago, and uh, I don't think it's been translated into English. I hope it has because it it deserves to be to be republished. It's a it's a horror comic um, set during World War Two. Where with uh, with a, a village in Poland turning into to flies and uh, killing the invading Nazis. David likes to write, to write mainly uh, horror stories, and uh, horror is not my favorite uh, my favorite theme. Uh, if I'm not reading science science fiction or uh, or superheroes, I, I'd rather read the straightforward adventure stories, usually with the retro theme or uh, westerns, as, I, as I've shown here. But this is this is very well written and very well researched and. Uh, I hope Mario, the, the editor Mario Freitas has already translated this because uh, it deserves to be seen by a, a wider audience. Finally, there are something that's on my to-read list. I have been buying these, the uh, Karl Barks collection from, from Fantagraphics, and I've only read the first one, but I have many more to read and uh, I haven't been uh, giving them their due attention. Disney is something that I stopped reading for many years because I thought it was kids stuff, but now that I can identify the the talent, the the artist artistry that Burks gave to to his stories, uh, I'm definitely discovering a new side to the Disney comics. 
there's another thing that I want to recommend. Uh, it's not a graphic novel, but it's a book about uh, comic books. And uh, if if you like reading about comics, you should also pay a bit more attention to the history of the medium. And this is of Comics and Man. It's a it was written by a French uh, university professor, Jean Paul Gabillier. And it's 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 the the most complete history of uh, of American comics from a uh, commercial and cultural perspective. It's not a um, it's not a collection of factoids like many histories are presented. It doesn't concern itself so much when uh, when characters are introduced or when uh, uh, writers did so and so as more of a um, general more of a general progression of how comics were important as a um, as a cultural means in the United States and um, how its influence wavered uh, along with the arrival of technologies and also how the uh, creative side reacted to different economic economic times no no pictures of course um, this was published in 2006 I'm not sure if it's still available but if you can find it uh, or you can order it uh, you should definitely do so it's actually kind of ironic that it was a Frenchman the, that did the, the best history of American comics and um, that's it for the um, graphic novel tag um, if you like seeing this and want to do a uh, tag of your own and want to do a video of your own please consider yourself tagged uh, even if you've never done a video before you can just record it on your on your smartphone and put it up on YouTube and tell your family and friends about it. Uh, thank you Samuel Trejo for the uh, opportunity to show some of my collection and uh, until my next video uh, keep reading old comics.